What's going on? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's a lot going on. Uh, it's, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, a lot going on. Um, so I think, uh, yeah. Yeah, anything you want? Elon, we want to get sense of your uh, thought process for growth rates and how do you uh, overall contextualize it or conceptualize it from uh, Tesla standpoint for unit growth. You you probably have your pulse on the entire global, uh, you know, macroeconomic aspects as well as demand for your product, right? So yeah. one aspect was that what we were discussing, and Elon, the second aspect was on Twitter side. It seems like you have kind of gotten to a good grip of the situation. What's your next step? So those are things which we are bouncing around our ideas on. Um, so it would be great if you could give a couple of uh, thoughts of your own. Sure. Well, on, I mean, on the Twitter front, um, I mean, it just, I need to sort of deep dive on Twitter just to uh, make sure the company didn't go bankrupt next year. Um, so that that was really, you know, just required, I don't know, uh, about, about a month of intense work. I was still doing Tesla work during that time as well, by the way. Um, and I think it's, it, it's really Tesla has not skipped a beat um, on execution. The Tesla team is doing an incredible job uh, across the board in execution. Um, so it's really, you know, can't say enough good things about the Tesla team uh, and, and the progress that's being made in terms of fundamentals. Um, with respect to, uh, you know, the, the, with respect to sort of, Global global demand. I, I just do do want to really emphasize, uh, and, and and I'm not I'm not trying to say that this is the only reason, but it is uh, in, uh, certainly the primary reason, uh, is that uh, when interest rates increase, the cost of a car increases along with it. So the, the the radical interest rate changes that have occurred have increased the price prices of all cars, actually new and used. Uh, I mean, you can see like what a bath, uh, Carvana and CarMax are taking. Um, this will be true of of, all, of anything bought with debt. Um, so so there's, that, that's on the demand side is is the the interest rate changes by the Fed and then everyone's f basically forced to follow the Fed. Um, so you've got uh, Europe ra raising interest rates, even Japan uh, raising interest rates. Uh, so uh, now the and, and in my view. Um, I've said, I've said a bunch of this already uh, on, on Twitter. In my view, we are already in deflation. Um, so, and, and the Fed is just dealing with old data. So, the, so then if, 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 if I'm correct that we're already in deflation, the real rate of return of T-bills is insanely high. It, it's arguably above the long-term rate of the S&P 500. It's, it's, sort of, it's arguably above 6% real, real rate of return on a T-bill right now. So uh, that's so. So you got two things that uh, you, you get a double whammy if if you're selling a product that is that is bought almost entirely with debt, like a car, um, and and uh, you you have uh, you know the risk-free rate um, approaching or, or so potentially exceeding uh, the the risky rate of the S and P 500, and that's why you're seeing a, a lot of Pretty smart uh, fund managers out there shorting the S and P five hundred. From a monetary policy perspective, Elon, like I completely agree with you, right? Like from a macroeconomic perspective, you know that's why growth in tech stocks compress when interest rates are going up. But you know, taking that out of the equation, and I think most of us reasonable investors up here, you know, understand that. And I, I found it funny when you made that comment to Ross the other day as well. But you know, taking that out of the equation, do you really feel you know, we've talked about the 50% growth rate and, and I find that that to be really an arbitrary number, you know, whether it's 40 or 45, yeah, yeah. do you really think Tesla um, is going to sustain that growth rate in the next couple of years still? <clears throat> well, so I, I'm just laying out the, what I see as, as just the, this is, this is my best guess at the future. It's not like, I have like some incredible crystal ball that is an exact predictor of anything. So with all appropriate caveats, uh, just, you know, this, but the, the, the reality is um, if we are, uh, if we are in a recession, I think we are in a recession and I think 2023 is going to be quite a serious recession. 
and it, it's it's going to be, I, in, in my opinion, comparable to twenty to, to comparable to two thousand nine. I don't know if it's going to be a little worse or a little better, but I think it's, it's in my view, likely to be comparable. Um, uh, and uh, th that means demand for uh, any sort of, any kind of optional discretionary item, especially if it's a big ticket item, will be lower. Um, and the and then with the Fed increasing rates, which is really, this is quite, this, this is, like when you're heading to a recession, you should be reducing uh, uh the Fed rate, not increasing it. Um, so that amplifies the difficulty. So now you have uh, sort of structural demand, which is uh, obviously going to be lower in a recession. And you've amplified the effective cost of a car uh, because they're almost all bought with debt. Um, so, uh, so so now you, so this, you get a double whammy is what I'm saying. Um, so now, so then, 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 the, then the obvious choice in that scenario is do you want to grow unit volume, uh, in which case uh, you'll have to adjust prices downward, um, or do you want to grow at a lower rate or go, go steady? It's, it's sort of a choice there. Um, you know, my, my inclination would be to still grow, you know, as I mean, my, 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 my bias would be to say like, okay, let's, let's grow as fast as we can without putting the company at risk. Um, which would mean, you know, in that in that scenario, profits would be low to negative during a recession, provided the cash position is okay. I think that's still the right move long term, um, and the so because there's also something that Tesla possesses that other car companies do not, which is extremely fundamental. That is that the cars are upgradable to to autonomy. Um, and so, and, and, and arguably, um, an, an autonomous car is worth many times what an, a non-autonomous car is. So even if your margins are extremely low uh, in selling the car, it's, it, the subsequent upgrade to it being autonomous uh, is worth a lot. So, and, and that's just that, that's something that no other car company can do. Uh, is only Tesla uh, can do that. So I, I so I think that like. So, so, like, so that you know. So, so like, if you say, like, you know, like well, um, I mean, I stand by my my prediction that uh, long term, um, you know, that 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 Tesla will be the most valuable company in the world. I'm I, I'm 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 actually fairly confident that that will be the that will be what happens. Um, what what I what I cannot predict because there are many things outside of my control is what will be the uh, the valuation along the along the way there so that that is subject to the uh, the stock you know the subject to a lot of emotional elements on the stock market subject to the macroeconomic conditions um, but if say like long term you know I, I would say Tesla's probably in my my best guess most valuable company in the world in less than five years. Hey, Elon, uh, in terms of existing manufacturers. Actually, so wait, three oh, aces. Sorry. Sorry, I want to, I apologize. I don't know how much time we're going to have. And I want to make sure Omar has a chance to get a question in here. Uh, I know a lot of people in here want to hear uh, any thoughts or anything like that. Omar, uh, I apologize for cutting you off, but uh, do you have anything? Well, yeah, you know, I, I think I definitely agree with Elon. I've been using the FSD beta. It's been driving me all around LA with no takeovers. But, you know, just to give voice to a lot of people, Elon, you know, you've blamed sort of the macro environment. I think a lot of people don't understand the economy. But what would you say to people who say that, oh, you know, Elon bought Twitter and he had to sell his shares and he hasn't been doing anything at Tesla. He hasn't been doing his job. And uh, he's turning people off with his political tweets. They're all canceling their Tesla orders. And this is all his fault, and he won't acknowledge it. He's just blaming it on macro. Um, well, the thing is that, uh, you know, if, if you look at sort of uh, automotive demand almost anywhere in the world, it's, it's, it's problematic almost any, anywhere in the world. And, and, and not everywhere cares about my political uh, comments. So, uh, 
so that I, that I think this is of, of really of minor minor impact. Um, really, it's, it's this is not. Um, I really just don't think this is a bit a, a significant factor. Yeah, um, I completely agree. So, I mean, and, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I, I, you know, so, um, yeah, the, yeah, I don't think it's a significant factor. I, but I, the, I, I, but the thing I just, you know, um, like, like the thing that like I think most people are just not realizing is just how. I, keep, I sound like a broken record on this, but how big of an impact a Fed rate uh, level is of of this of you know on the order of five percent is if we are in a deflationary environment, which I think we are in. In in we autos, we are that, in a deflationary environment. Hundred percent agree. Objectively, with you. we are. And you yeah. know, you know, in twenty twenty one, we sold you know. Uh, your mic cut out there, I think. Yeah, you cut out oh, um, as well. Elon, Elon, one one comment I wanted to ask you on Twitter, Elon specifically. You know, the other the other day you tweeted about, you know, if you were to step down as CEO, you'd stay on as head of software and servers. And you know, from my perspective, I've been a Tesla investor since 2015, Elon. And like, you know, my view of of you at Tesla is that like a lot of your excellence comes from your vision and your ability to delegate talent. So I guess my my question to you would be. And, and, I, and I'm not saying I'm in the school of thought of some people that believe that you're not working on Tesla and SpaceX. I believe that you are. And I think that people just have a misrepresentation by reading your feed that you're not. But, you know, that being said, why is it that you feel, I guess, at this juncture that you can't delegate, uh, you know, a handful of talent that you trust who share your vision to run the Twitter side while you focus on some of the bigger, bigger things elsewhere? I'm just curious to hear your opinion on that. Um, I mean, as I said at the beginning of the call, um, the you know I had to have a, a sort of a short term, uh, you know, month or so of just getting the insane Twitter costs under control. Of Twitter would just go flat bankrupt. Um, so now that is uh, basically almost entirely done, uh, and then I've got to make sure that the engine of engineering at uh, Twitter is working. Uh, so. Uh, Otherwise, we, tw Twitter cannot develop new features. But in, in the grand scheme of things, the amount of uh, actual uh, cognitive load that Twitter represents is is low. I mean, it, it is a, a much simpler problem than than uh, Tesla or SpaceX, obviously by by a country mile. Um, so uh, I would say there was, it was like high cognitive load for about a, about a month. At this point, it is a moderate cognitive load. A month from now, it'll be it'll be I think low. So, and and, there, and and if I look back and say like, okay, what what are actions that could have been taken? What, what was it something that that I didn't I failed to do at Tesla that that could have been done and would have improved our execution? I literally cannot think of a single thing. Elon, can you talk yeah, about? Yeah, this is really yeah. great to hear you say. Um, I I think. A lot of investors have sort of wanted to hear you say that and just reaffirm that you're committed to Tesla. I think those of us who know you know that your commitment to Tesla hasn't changed, but the perception people see on the internet can be very skewed sometimes. Elon, can you talk about the issues in in China and, and outlook on SAR? I know, you know, Tesla has been able to sell an increased penetration market share in EVs for many years, but you know now that it's at a larger scale. You know, global auto SAR was at 66.7 million units in 2021. U.S. SAR is at 14.1 million. Outlooks for next year in the U.S. and overseas are, are on the decline. And prices are also declining. Like you said, I agree we're in an auto deflationary environment when it comes to prices. Yeah. Can, yes, objectively so. Yeah. Can, can Tesla potentially, how, you know, when it comes to unit sales, can Tesla continue to increase unit sales in this type of environment? Um, or will it have to provide more incentives or, you know, how are you planning to, uh, you know, this macroeconomic environment is pretty challenging. How do you plan to address some of these, you know, these, these issues that are outside of your control? Um, I, I'm just telling you, like factually, the, if, if, if you, you know, since the, since the vast majority of cars are bought on, on credit, the interest rates are a high interest rate, high real interest rate. Uh, is literally just like increasing the price of the car. 
So in order to keep demand constant, um, uh, you would have to therefore decrease the price of the car. Uh, it's the only that that's if, if you want to keep demand constant, and if you want to increase demand, you have to decrease the price of the car further. This is just uh, this is like econ 101 stuff. So that's that's the situation we have. It's kind of blown my mind that the Fed has raised rates so high. Uh, they're just dealing with old information, um, and it's it's like basically like the economy right now is like a car, you know, driving around on a cliffside road, uh, and uh, the the Fed is driving it by looking out the rear rear view, view, view mirror. In fact, it's not even looking at the rear view mirror. It's looking at a video taken of, of the out of the rear view mirror that's like three months old. <laughs> so obviously, this is not a good way to drive a car in a, in a windy cliff road. Um, so they're just very old school and tra traditional. Um, and, uh, and, and, and I think we're in for a hard landing. Uh, that's, that's based on the it, it's yeah um like i said you have to think like it, it like for, for argument's sake if the, and for, like if 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 you have a risk free rate like that that is higher than the return on the s p which is which obviously has fluctuations why would anyone have stock i mean we're buying bonds we're buying preferreds we're you know at 11 12 percent yields you, know, you can buy the T flow. Everyone on here, there's ETFs. They're floating rate instruments. You can easily earn, you know, high single digits, double digit return in very low risk securities today. So I 100% agree with you. Why would you buy residual interest equity securities in risky companies? I 100% agree with with your thought process. In an environment like this, now we don't expect rates to stay here forever, but it's a good question right. everyone should ask themselves. Yeah, I mean the the the, the, the exactly. And so so like probably what's going to happen. Um, it sounds like based on the Fed signaling is they'll increase uh, rates by another fifty basis points next month, uh, and then my guess is they'll. <clears throat> again, this is I felt like I have a hotline to Jerome Powell. You know, if somebody knows Jerome Powell, please tell him to stop predicting interest rates. This was insane. Um, I feel like you could get him on the phone if you really wanted. I to think so. At this point, um, is he allowed to talk to me? Sure. Well, he I'm doesn't have a Twitter free, account. I'm pretty sure he's sure, allowed to talk to you. Talk to business leaders, totally. Let's okay. get this set up. Let's do it on Twitter Spaces. That would be a conversation. That'd be sick. <laughs> Elon <laughs> versus the Fed on Twitter. Spaces. Twitter's valuation would pop on that too, right? You'd get a whole new batch of list listeners. Well, it's, like, it's the whole the whole market, you know. Uh, but like like I said, the thing that to appreciate about like uh, in interest rate increases is is the double whammy effect of if you're looking at a, at a stock price is higher interest rates will reduce the uh, profitability of of any company selling something that is dependent on the price of debt, um, like because cars are bought with leases and loans, so uh, people look at their monthly payment, and so you you have basically. Uh, uh, demand slash profitability issue with higher interest rates and then on the, which which then re reduces profitability obviously and then in general the the valuation of, equ of all equities drops with the increase in the real interest rate that's the double whammy effect that i'm talking about um now, now the, the, the this this will not last forever they'll they'll i mean i don't know hopefully they'll see like okay this they've gone too far and then start lowering the rate and then it's a question of well, at what rate do they lower the rate? How long does it take them to get the rate back to something sensible? Elon, um, on that point you made earlier about you know the the raising you know the higher rates, obviously making cars effectively more expensive. You know, I agree with that. Obviously, it's a pretty basic notion, but I, I'm just curious. And we've talked about this before, and I know Gary has mentioned this before. What's your view on Tesla's path to the thirty thousand dollar vehicle or the next vehicle? I know you said that you guys had kind of tabled that last time you spoke about it. Um, have you guys brought that back up? Is it something you're considering again now, um, especially in this environment? I I'm just curious. Um, yeah, I mean, look, this is like not the forum to make product announcements, uh, but, uh, you know, we, we, we're obviously uh, want to make more affordable cars. So, um and the, the the Tesla product pipeline is awesome. I think Tesla's got the most exciting uh, product roadmap of any company on earth by far. Um, so, 
that's uh, you know, and the proof will be in the pudding. So, hey, you want, uh, can I can I ask? I mean, I just connecting some of the the previous points together. I'm a ten year owner of Tesla and ten year investor as well. Um, just connecting some of the previous points together. When I looked at the 08, 09 inflation uh, uh, recession, um, in 07, in U.S. auto sales, we're at 16 and a half million cars. 08, it went down to 13.1, and then 09, it went down to 10.4. So if you go from 07 to 09, there was like a 36% drawdown in U.S. I'm just looking at U.S. auto sales. And then, yeah. and then you look at what what Tesla is projected to do this year in the U S in terms of EV as a percent of auto, it's going to grow 50% this year, go from 4.7% penetration of total auto to 7%, which is like a 50% jump in the U S and it's going to do about a hundred percent jump in China year over year. So these are unbelievable growth numbers of EV as a percent of auto. And the thing I don't think we've layered in is that, Tesla has increased prices, even with this, this inventory uh, reduction the last couple of days, like the Model Y, I think is still $19,000 higher than it was in the early part of Q4 uh, 2021. So long story short, if you overlay like, you know, Tesla's EV adoption growth and you overlay like what happened in the last recession, which was pretty gnarly, it feels like there's, and with, and the fact that prices have gone up so much and commodities have come down so much over the last, I won't say so much, but commodities are st starting to come down. How do you feel Tesla is positioned with all those factors in mind? I think Tesla's positioned better than any other car company by far. Um, and like I said, the, 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 the fact that the, the vehicle is capable of, of autonomy um, with a proper update is gigantic, a gigantic thing. Um, no one else has that. So, um, and we also, have, you know, are starting from a position where our uh, gross margins are higher than I think anyone else, which gives us more room to lower them and and, and maintain or increase demand. So. Uh, now, does that mean that like profits are a pretty picture in in a in, in like a two thousand nine style re recession? Uh, of course not. It's that's just not physically possible. And there's no and, and there's no there's there is it is there's no human on earth or you know me or anyone else who could change that. Hey, hey, Elon. Real, uh, I'm an emergency yeah, real, real quick. guy. Um, yeah, I mean, I yeah, I, I want to jump in here quickly. Uh, I appreciate it. Elon, I want to throw you out there a quick question, and then I'll throw it over to Gov, and then I want to hear Gary if he has any thoughts. Uh, but Elon, we're on Twitter Spaces right right now. It, is Twitter Spaces something that's kind of core you, to you and, and Twitter and, and the long term of it? Uh, it, it? Is it important to you? I mean, Twitter Spaces seems to be, you know, tw Twitter Spaces, you know, um, I think is... Uh, a great forum for uh, the, the public in general, and I think it's quite useful to get the message out. Um, obviously, um, it's you know basically being on Twitter Space and then being able to see, see the, the the Twitter comments, the written comments at the same time. I think is Twitter at its best. Yeah, um, I would definitely echo. All right, can I stir up some drama here? Because we've got Ross Gerber in the room, and Ross has been saying Elon's doing a shitty job, he's not there, and he wants to run for the board of directors. Ross, would you like to confront Elon right now while we're in this space yeah, for, for the for, audience's first of all, entertainment? That's not what I've been saying at all. I'm probably one of the biggest fans of Elon of anybody here, and I'm super grateful for the effort and success that he's put into making Tesla successful in SpaceX. And all I want to know is what's going on. And that's all I've asked from the Tesla board, too, is, like, I just want to back at Tesla. And I, I just miss you, Elon. Like, I, I love Twitter, and I love what you're doing with Twitter. And, and I support it 100%. And I've invested in it. And I would invest more. But I just, like, I really, I really think there's a huge community of people who just want to know like, what's the next move? Like, how long is this going to be? Like, how much more stock are you going to sell? These are basic questions that I think are fair to ask. 
Yeah, I'm not selling any stock for, I don't know, a quarter minimum 18 to 24 months. So you can count on me like no, no stock sales till probably, I don't know, 25, 2025 or something. I, I basically, I've, you know, I was like, you know, I need to sort of sell some stock just to make sure like there's like powder dry that, you know, uh, if, to account for a worst case scenario. Totally. Um, yeah. I, I and so that's, that. that's really it. Yeah. But I want to buy. Uh, but I'm, I'm not. I'm not selling any. Any. Yeah. It's like I just don't want to get whacked the next day. You know what I mean? Yeah. Fair enough. Um. So I. I mean, you still have my commitment that I. I won't uh, sell stock until I don't know, probably two years from now. I, uh, definitely not next year under any circumstances. Um. And um. You know, I probably not the year thereafter. So, I. I. You know, I just really want to make sure that. I'm somewhat paranoid having gone through two really intense receptions. <laughs> I totally in, understand in, that. Yeah, That's I'm great like, news. Thanks for making yeah, that so, statement. So can, that means a lot can you just answer? Factors, can you answer my other question though? Like, as far as what you're thinking as a timeline, as far as like when you're going to be back in Austin? Yeah, I mean, I was I I, I was back in Austin just last week, but but to, you know, Tesla's still primarily in the Bay Area, and I'm in the Bay Area. That's right, I, right, I, I hadn't, right. I, like, the, the, like literally, there's not a single uh, important like, like Tesla meeting that I've missed this entire time. Um, so it's not like you know I, I'm totally missing an action. That's that's just that's that is that's just not the case. I, I agree, I, like, but I'm, maybe it's the optics yeah. a little bit. That's kind of where I'm coming from. It's it's like sure. it's like an optics thing, and and like and like a lot of things you're doing on Twitter, I'm like super like it needed to be done, like you know how I feel about the people who are running Twitter before. And I'm, I think you're doing a great job with the product, not, not to mention too, although it's not an easy task by any means, but I just think the perception is like, Oh, he's doing this now and he's not doing that. And maybe the media is doing that, but it's just something you should be aware of. And that perception is a reality to a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, Twitter is obviously like mega catnip, if you if you cross catnip with crack, that's what Twitter is. <laughs> a catnip crack. Um, so like any tiny little thing, of Twitter is like front page news. Right. Uh, you know, it, it's like it, it's like uh, we, we, you know we we have like some you know mid level person left Twitter front page news. Right. Like what the, it was ridiculous. Um, so uh, you know. Um, so it's, it's just it's going to get like outsized att attention, um, but it's not like, like there's just literally. If I think like, is there anything that I could have done uh, in the past like few months that would have helped with Tesla's execution? I literally can't think of anything. Right. So, um, and there was not a single important meeting that I missed. It's uh, we're making great progress on future product developments. Um, and it's really just like I, I think you know there's going to be some uh, macro drama that's that's higher than people th currently think, or higher than most people think. Um, and uh, it's hard to predict exactly. You know, it's, economic prognostication is uh, fraught with difficulty. But uh, you know, if if we do have another two thousand nine situation. Um, that that that's it's, you know the stock prices of everything is going to be lower, um, and uh, and and then I think it, it's arguable that stock prices of of any anything that's bought with debt will you know like not not a state but like it's sort of you know it's like you know uh, buying sort of food at the, at the grocery store people will still buy that but because but things that are bought with debt like like basically housing and and cars are going to be the, the two biggest right. Uh, are, are really going to just uh, get disproportionately impacted, um, but it, but then it's sort of so. But if you say like that's why I was trying to emphasize like, but from a long term standpoint, like this is there's a natural economic cycle that happens, and frankly, we're overdue for a, 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 a recession. Um, it's like shocking that we haven't had like a serious recession since you know or, um, in, or recession in any mean, meaningful sense of the word since 2009. That's like 13 years. Like wow. Um, so this is it, like it, it just the economic cycles are just the way the economy works. Like you have up, up and down cycles, and it's just the way things go. 
Um, so we're somewhat overdue for that. Um, I mean, I, I was talking to like um, Brett Johnson, who's the CFO of SpaceX, and he was telling me about uh, when he was at uh, Broadcom in 2000. And Broadcom was a, you know, Broad, Broadcom's a, a good company making, you know, good products. It's, it's not like Pets.com. So, uh, and, 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 and I was like, I was like, yeah, it's, it's pretty wild how, you know, when there's like, when, when there's panic in the stock market, like how, how much, you know, even high quality company stocks can drop. And he was like, yeah, when he was at Broadcom, the, the stock dropped 97%. I was like, wow, that's a lot. That subsequently recovered to, I think, above, you know, its previous all time high. But, you know, when there's extreme panic in the markets, like things can go to like ridiculous levels. I'm not saying that they will, but they, 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 this is, this is a thing that has happened in the past. Um, that's why I've been just been very much encouraging people to avoid buying stock on margin um, and just uh, avoid, mm-hmm. avoid margin debt because you just don't know if, when, if there's going to be some panicky situation in the stock market. Um, so well, we got the panicky situation in the stock market before we got the recession. It seems, um, but it seems like the market is clearly pricing in what you're talking about. And I don't disagree with your viewpoint on Jerome Powell. And I would love to get him on a Twitter Spaces, to be honest. Yeah, um, cool. but I also think that Tesla has a certain level of recession proofness because buying a Tesla does cost cut your cost of living from an ICE vehicle. And I also think. And maybe you, you can confirm this, that your margins are probably increasing now that the supply chain issues and a lot of the commodity prices are decreasing, which can allow Tesla to lower prices to continue to sell more cars without hurting margins. Um, so I, I just want, you know, like I think Tesla will, will weather, the, you know, what I think is an upcoming economic storm maybe better than than any company uh for sure uh, but you know apart from like if like i said if, if, if a company's like making like bread or something they'll probably be you know they're like <laughs> relatively recession proof um but uh you know compared to any any company making large co- complex manufactured objects that are bought with debt tesla i think will be will do relatively better than anyone um but that that doesn't it's sort of like if you're a ship in the storm even if you have a really high, great ship, you're still going to get bashed by the storm. You know, so yeah. Um, the, the the and there is uh, with respect to to cost structure, somewhat of a lag effect, um, where uh, the the supply chain takes a, a, a there's latency in the supply chain, so the supply chain uh, takes will, will take a bit longer to reduce costs than. Um, than, than we'd like because it's this, I don't know, cold, six months of latency. In the right, 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 right. So Elon, on, like the, on the supply chain side, Elon, just, just a question. You know, I'm, I'm a, a lithium investor myself, and I know you've made many comments on lithium refining and, and processing in the last few months. What's been your, I guess, anecdotal view from Tesla's perspective um, into the end of this year on, on battery metals prices? And, and do you have a view on battery metals prices uh, for next year as well? And any kind of commentary on how that's affected you or any kind of strategy that Tesla's implementing um, to stay ahead of, of the battery metal uh, pricing curve, if you will. Yeah. So, you know, again, I, I keep emphasizing like all these things need to be taken with a grain of salt. Cause I'm not, I don't have like some, you know, of course. Yeah. I understand we're asking you to speculate. I yeah. It's, it's, it's like, uh, if I had a perfect crystal ball, you know, it'd be great, but I don't, um, the, the, the price of battery grade lithium is obviously insane. Um, and it's constrained primarily at the uh, lithium refining level, more, much more so than at the mining level. Um, and that's why Tesla's building a lithium refinery in Corpus Christi. Um, so uh, it is, is really to, to get, get out away from that, that choke point of, or diminish the, 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 cho- the, the, the lithium refining uh, choke point. This, this, like lithium is extremely common if, everywhere, basically. It's, it's not like oil. Like oil is much more localized and rarer than, than lithium. Lithium is 
basically so, everywhere. You know, on that facility you guys are looking at erect, erect and corpus, you know, um, I, I've done a lot of work on, on lithium refining and processing. And I mean, typically those facilities, you know, even with optimal CapEx are taking a minimum of seven years to get <laughs> to, to maximum. Um, so are you guys looking at a shorter timeline? Are you Have you guys kind of broken that mold? Yeah, I mean, seven years is insane. I, no, I mean, we're, I, at least well, maybe we're diluted, but we're, we're aiming to be having, having, have meaningful volume out of that refinery in like two years. Yeah, that's impressive. That's wildly impressive. And then you guys, I'm sure you guys will make, make way on that. And is that the only project you guys have considered so far or is there, and I know a lot of this is speculation, but just curious. Well, we're also doing um, the, the cathode refining, um, but that's, that's like pretty obvious because it's like there's a giant building on the other side of the, the Giga Texas fa factory. That, that, that giant building is the cathode refinery that, that we've been building. So, um, awesome. Awesome. That, 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 and that's obviously for, for nickel based cathodes. Uh, um, so, um, so, so we're like, I think, taking the steps that uh, are necessary to enable you know very high volume uh, output of vehicles electric vehicles and and stationary battery packs um and to to reduce our de uh dependence uh on the supply chain um so like i think we're making the the the, the small strategic moves here um and uh and, and, and i but you know as far as like i, I think we depending on like what happens with total automotive demand or especially electric vehicle demand next year, especially in China where, where they make the most number of EVs. I think, I think we probably see some reduction in the cost of battery materials. Um, yeah. Um, Elon on, you mentioned earlier on the asset yeah. price conundrum, you know, when it comes to cars and autos and homes, the same applies to companies, right? If you think about, Charter, for example, it has an earnings yield of 10%, but it has a debt yield of 7%. It used to be 4%. So corporate buybacks are less attractive in this environment. Would you agree that it makes more sense to reinvest in Tesla than it does to buy back stock? Well, <clears throat> I mean, we're actually, I'd say, in, in, we're applying uh, capital at pretty close to the fastest rate that we can spend capital and not be wasteful. So we're not like saying, oh, you know, let's like uh, not spend money on important long-term projects. Like I just mentioned like the lithium refinery and the cathode refinery, um, which, which are important for long-term, uh, you know, high growth. So we are making these investments and we, uh, you know, I can't sort of say too much about this, but we are close to picking a uh, location for an, another gigafactory. Um, um, but I, we, we want to be just be sort of careful and deliberate about that. Um, so that, so we're, there's, there's, you know, a lot of, a lot of good things that are happening. Um, the, but, but like, I, I think the smart move, is to take is like we like we are coming in we're coming into this like recession i think in, in a very strong position like we don't have any debt we've got you know uh on the order of 20 billion dollars of, of you know cash and cash equivalents um and that's a pretty great position to be going into uh stormy waters with um but but like i think we want to make sure that like let's just see like how stormy are these waters and um, are we talking about a mild recession, moderate recession, severe recession? We don't know yet. So I think it's it's not like we just want to keep our, our powder dry uh, and see what you know what's what what kind of um, economic environment are we going to see in 2023? Um, and um, it, you know the, the 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 board is very open to doing a buyback, but I think it's like we just want to. It, it would like it wouldn't be smart to do a buyback and and then uh discover that the recession is like i don't know for our for our gonna take worse than 2009 and i'm like and then i'm like that was foolish to have you know used up cash reserves uh for for a buyback in in, in the face of a severe recession so 
we just need to kind of see what is the nature of the recession and um and and if and then it, like if, if it's looking like hey we're doing okay um from a cash standpoint and uh the, the stock price is like absurdly low then you know at, at least my vote on the board would be to sort of do a buyback uh that but that's you know that's subject to the the rest of the board's opinion as well, but but my vote would be to do a buyback if once we ha are able to properly calibrate the scale of the recession um, and our and just make sure that Tesla is, is is healthy and we're not you know spending cash reserves and putting putting the company at risk, um, you know that 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 would be my concern. Uh, on the people Twitter, like Twitter above Tesla, for... yeah. Sorry, well, yeah. I go first. So I'm popping after you. Yeah, I mean, for people like me who love Tesla and love the products, it's just, you know, I'm really glad that Tesla got profitable when it did. Because if it had to go through the storm when it was sort of where it was in 2018 or 2019, I mean, oh, it might not have made it through it. Yeah. So it's, I'm you bad. know, really to tremendous credit of the management that we've gotten to this place where we're profitable and we don't have to worry about Tesla going under with this storm. You have the startups like Rivian and Lucid who are just burning cash like crazy. Yeah. Terrible situation for them. The legacy automakers, they're not in a great situation. Correct. Tesla is launching FSD beta. They're doing pretty well overall. They're in a better position than pretty much any of their peers. And that's, I think, a huge credit to you and the rest of the Tesla team. Let me tell you, the Tesla team is kicking ass. And, like, honestly, to, to use an, an, an acronym, Tesla is firing on all cylinders. Um, so... It's the the actual you know execution of the company is, is I think outstanding. Um, the team's doing kick ass job. Um, so the it's like like just you know um, I guess like Warren um, you know what's that Warren Buffett's got a lot of great sayings you know uh, <laughs> um, but, but the you know cause this is a sort of thing where like like I you know I suspect Warren Buffett's going to be buying a lot of stock next year, you know, um, because the, if a company has like very strong fundamentals, but then the, the, the market is, is doing some short term panic situation, obviously that's the, the, the right time to buy stock. Um, and, uh, like I stand by my prediction that Tesla will be the most valuable company in the world. Um, I, I can, I'm actually pretty confident that would be the case. Um, but I just can't predict with accuracy the stock price between now and then. On the yeah. Twitter X a little bit Tesla before. crossover that's or happening not, there, I think when you were... Sorry, one looking... at a time, please. Oh, yeah, sorry about that. Stock took a minute if I go? Yeah, yeah go for it, sorry. Go. Yeah, yeah. On, on the Twitter X Tesla crossover, and we're all power users of Twitter, stock market yeah. news, Doc Talk and I have been using it for years. We've been hosting like 40 hours of spaces a week. There was a lot of hope that when the acquisition happened that this could be a real synergy for Tesla, right? Who notoriously doesn't spend money on marketing and now has access to this incredible yeah. community. It, but of course, you know, there's there's been work that has to go into Twitter. There's been a lot of restructuring there. Are there active synergies that you see or ways that you see these crossing over in the coming months or years to really supplement each other? Well, I, I mean, Twitter, I, I mean, I and, and, and Tesla have long used Twitter, frankly, for free. Mm -hmm. To advertise Tesla, um, so you know, the, the, like my my account and the and the Tesla account have been incredibly effective in building awareness of Tesla and actually driving demand. Um, so, um, I think there probably are some some synergies there, uh, where you know, Twitter can be helpful, to, you know, perhaps even more helpful to to Tesla. Um, uh, it certainly has to, yeah, so. Um, hey, hey, Elon, is there a way to connect our Tesla profiles to our Twitter profiles and get it in the car? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think we, we could. Yeah, yeah, I think Twitter yeah. should be like the social graph of Tesla. Like, I want to go yes. in my nav system and say, okay, I want to meet up with Ross. So, like, yes. navigate us to this restaurant. We can see each other's location. That kind of and thing. I could see all the other Tesla owners driving around me that want their visibility shared, and we could communicate through uh, through Twitter as the app. 
Um, yeah, that's a good point, actually. I don't th- yeah, I mean, it, it would kind of make sense to uh, have have a Twitter app on on um, on Tesla. Um, yeah, yeah, we could listen to Spaces while we're supercharging. I was just supercharging actually, like a half an hour ago, and you just sit there. You know, it's like perfect. I mean, Elon, yeah. Tesla is the biggest source of your wealth. When it comes to to Twitter, I mean, these ideas are all great. These ideas are great. But does it make sense to have someone like you know David Sachs come in and help you manage Twitter? And are there like three candidates that you think would be really interesting to support you so that through this recession, you know, the focus can be more on Tesla? Uh, the focus will <laughs> maybe clear. The like, focus will absolutely be. Uh, prior, I mean, t- t- Tesla just fundamentally is a far more complex uh, beast than than Twitter. Um, so the, the the things that are necessary to operate Twitter are just it's, it are far fewer. It's 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 a, it's a subset of of of, of Tesla uh, complexity. Um, you, you know, obviously, like tw- Twitter is like it's got you know there's it's servers and and software and, and you know phone apps and stuff, and it's you know it's at scale and stuff, but it's uh, it is obviously a it's, it's the complexity is a, a, more than an order of magnitude lower than than Tesla. So it, my attention will be primarily on Tesla, uh, and, and I think I can s- s- still you know uh, improve the Twitter product uh, qu- because I, mean, I can I use it a lot. So um, you know, in terms of guiding the, the product to become better and better, that's like kind of a natural thing since I have been using Twitter actively for you know since two thousand nine. Um, it's uh, you know it's basically not that hard to know what things need to improve and then give that direction to the team and have it ha- you know get it done. So yeah, it's um, I, I don't want I, I don't I'm not trivializing Twitter, it's, but it's just uh, objectively um, it's a it's it's like about 10, maybe 10% 10 of the complexity of, of, of Tesla. So, um, music to our ears. A lot of investors are so happy to hear you say that. And I think it yes. you coming on this space and talking to people. Elon, I just want to ask you briefly about, about Tesla Super and, Super and the appreciate. launch, of, launch of Tesla electricity in Texas. Uh, you know, I'm a Texas resident as well. So, you know, I think that that's a pretty exciting additional vertical, maybe for Tesla from, the utility perspective, if you just want to comment briefly on Tesla electricity and, and that starting up and, and your guys' outlook for, for Tesla electricity going forward, I think that'd be great to, to comment on. Uh, sure. Well, I mean, the overarching focus of Tesla is to accelerate the advent of sustainable energy. And one of the, and there's like just really three pillars to sustainable energy, which is sustainable energy generation, um, for, you know, primarily through wind and solar. Um, and then storage of that energy uh, station battery packs uh, because of the intermittency We really want to be doing, um, you know, a thousand plus gigawatt hours a year of battery packs, combined stationary and uh, and and vehicle, and, and if not two thousand. Um, so, you know, it's big numbers. Um, at, at some point, like the, uh, I do eventually need to do this, like. Mass plan part three. The mass plan part three is just about scale, and 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 just like people, just like one shouldn't even think of things in in terms of like uh, dollars. 
we need to think of things in terms of tonnage. Like what tonnage of, of battery pack is needed. Like the fundamental rate limiter for humanity becoming self-sustaining from an energy standpoint is how, wh how, wh how many gigawatt hours per year of battery pack can you make? That, that, that fundamentally sets the rate uh, at which uh, humanity can transition to sustainable energy is how, wh how many batteries can you make per year? Uh, at the ton, how, how, what's the tonnage? <laughs> well, the, you know, in, in storage terms, the how many thousands of gigawatt hours per year can can humanity make? That's the, the, and the the faster that that ramps, the faster one can get to a sustainable future. And our rough back of the envelope for transitioning uh, civilization to a fully sustainable uh, energy economy is around. Uh, 300 terawatts, 300, 300 terawatt hours of installed capacity, um, ish. I mean, other people may come up with different numbers, but it's it's not an order of magnitude higher than that, and it's not an order of magnitude lower than that. So we'll go to Monative next. Uh, Monative, I'm sure, is a great question. Monative, you've had your hand up for a while, and then we'll go to Earl as well, who's had his hand up. Monative, what's up? Uh, thanks, Talk Talk. Uh, Elon, I uh, want to take you back a little bit to the comment you made about uh, about Fed being behind the curve and and over tightening. So uh, I've, I've been living in the valley here for you know close to 25, uh, 25 plus years now. So been through the thick and thin in the valley. So certainly it looks like we are heading to a to a tech jobs recession, if nothing else, and probably a white collar jobs recession and certainly a significant pullback in tech. Do you think that data is going to, you know, cause further contagion from top down at the highest income levels? And is the Fed going to see that and 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 take that into account? Because clearly the overall jobs market is fine at the lower level, but certainly there's a lot of weakness at the higher level. Um, sorry, I, 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 you blanked out there for a second. Can you repeat the question? Uh, sorry about that. So, so I was just saying, uh, you know, uh, to your earlier point about the Fed being behind the curve, right, we're, now, yeah. we're not seeing, you know, real jobs problem at the highest level within tech. The the high paying jobs are being lost at a furious pace. But but overall job market seems to be fine because of the lower end jobs. Do you think the Fed is going to take that level of nuance into account before they go too far? Look, I don't know what the, I, 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 my insight into, into the, the Fed's decision making is zero. Um, so I don't know, you know, I don't know any of the, anyone on any of the people on the Fed board. Uh, I'm not sure I've ever even spoken to them, so I I, I don't know what the Fed's going to do. Um, I've been surprised by the rate increases, and like I said, the the I think they're just they're looking at like data in a kind of a legacy way with with that, that where the data's got a lot of latency, um, more late, and and so then they're just making decisions uh, with with uh, data with data that's really uh, stale. Um, and not reflective of the current situation. Um, so um, that, that just means their reaction will be delayed. Um, so th they're uh, raising rates more than they should, and then they, they'll probably take longer to lower the rates than they should. That's based on the past track record. That makes perfect sense with structural unemployment. I mean, there, there are a million jobs without open, open immigration that we can't, we can't just make out it. We can't fill out a thin air. So, I tend to agree with you that this tightening could last longer. And, and Musk, you're not the only one. I mean, they're they're you know, the top hedge fund managers in the world. I mean, Tepa, Tepper was on TV this morning. I've never seen the guy this de depressed in the last 20 years. Wow. So, you know, he was the one in 2010 that was saying, "Hey, you know, QE, QE1, he went all in and you know built a 20 billion dollar organization." But, you know, even the best fund managers, prognosticators, no one has any idea on how this is going to play out. So all we can do is 
you know, have our scenarios and, and play out various cases and, and manage for the manage risk for the best. Yeah. Um, Earl, you're up. Hey, thank you. Hello, Elon. A uh, long time shareholder, first time caller. Um, I have a, a quick question, but before I get to that, I would like to point out that when you put Floki in the front, Tesla was over $300 a share. I don't know if it was related, but you might want to consider that to uh, pump the stock again. Um, on to my question. Um, I've always been a rabid fan. There's a lot of people who are similar to me, probably a little more liberal, very passionate about our Teslas, proud of our Teslas. And, um, you know, over the takeover of Twitter and uh, some of these comments, I think uh, some of us have been feeling a little bit disenfranchised, um, you know, still, still big fans, still shareholders. But, um, it, you know, some of the magic is missing a little bit there. Um, for example, I have a, a daughter or um, I have a daughter and then also a trans child. And they both were always very excited about our Tesla. We went and bought a Model X and um, now they have mixed feelings about it. You know, it's just like, you know, um, and it, it's not always directly related to what you say, but kind of some of the opinions or attention you draw to things like pronouns or something like that. And it's just, it's sad for me to watch that happen. And um, so I've tried to speak out about that. You know, it doesn't really go anywhere, but um, I, I do worry also as a shareholder about, you know, are we alienating certain people, not just extreme left people, but just kind of in the middle folks like myself that, um, you know, it's just added in some politics and controversy that um, takes away a little bit of the shine off of our Tesla. Um, now, I did sell my Model 3, but it was mostly because I live in Alaska. We're missing some chargers. I'm going to throw in a plug for that. But, um, you know, still a big fan. Like I said, still have our shares, you know, still love driving our Teslas around. But I do, I, I was just wondering if you've thought about that at all as you're, you know, taking on this big uh, Twitter job. Yeah, I mean, it's like, uh, you know, I'm not going to like, sort of suppress my views uh you know so it's like you know it's just just to, just to boost the stock price so i'm like that's uh, like not gonna do it so yeah yeah I, I don't think that's what he's saying though elon i i i think when you own a media property there's this perception of independence that's expected from the owner and the Wall Street Journal is owned by Rupert Murdoch, but he doesn't write the opinion pieces, even though we know it's his opinion. And so I think, <laughs> it, you know, so I think it, it sort of like throws people off that the owner has an opinion. Now, I, I don't think your opinions are extreme, but a lot of people in the media take what you say. And by the time the customers read it, it's not what you said at all. And, you know, I, I just think there's this big perception gap being driven on beliefs that aren't even yours really because you're saying something you know and i just think that part of it it's almost like a trap that that don't it's like a lose lose trap and and i hate seeing people get caught in that i mean elon do, you don't hate trans people do you or what no, are your thoughts on that uh no of course not um so i i, I mean i'm not i'm not in general a hater of anyone frankly so uh, but I, you know, I think that there's, you know, we, 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 the, the thing that like, it does, it does bother me that, that people will use like pronouns to be, just be super judgmental. Um, and actually this, I just have, I, to me, it feels like a lot of these things are like, uh, just allow, they're, they're a shield that allow people to be assholes. They're like a moral shield that where they can, they're, they just, it just gives them a, an excuse to be an asshole, and that's that's what that bothers me. Um, so yeah, I get that, and it, but I think what happens real easily in the media is it just appears that you're like punching down to a really marginalized group. Like my kid is just trying to have like their pronoun used in school and stuff, and it's like, you know, then you have this really rich, popular person like crapping on pronouns, but it gets mixed up, and it's like I think the people that you're talking about 
like it gets mixed up and then uh, people just see it as a more broader thing that you're like you know, being negative towards trans people. But okay, I do so have to let's, ask you really Let's quickly. move on yeah, to this. Just, just really yeah. Move on to the next I, conversation. Yeah, gonna, yeah, we got um, Gary and Chuck the, with hands up. Too. We're gonna go to we're gonna go to Gov first, who says hand up, and then we'll go to yeah. Gary. I, I got just a simple question, Elon, because there's been a lot of this use of polls on Twitter. And as somebody again, we're Twitter power users, we love that idea that we can have the opportunity to participate in major decisions that are gonna affect us, right? Like my entire income comes from Twitter. Uh, with that being said, there's been a couple different ways around the polls. There's been thoughts, are the polls being used to root out bots? There's been polls that are, of course, you've uh, abided by. Um, there's been a tweet that polls would maybe just be available to Twitter blue users. I'm kind of curious if there's any clarity you can give on, you know, are these major decisions going to be made by polls? Can those polls be trusted? Do you have systems to get rid of potential botting? And then will those polls be available to everybody or just to Twitter blue users? Um, I think that. It's the subject of a debate. Um, the, 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 the challenge with the with Paul's. Yeah, I mean, bot, bot is maybe not necessarily the the right word um, because th th there are bots like th th like there's degrees. There's a purely automated situ situation which uh, where, where capture would have some value. Um, although, you know, really, uh, AI like free, readily available AI is getting to the point where it's you know, <laughs> it's, it's certainly going to get to the point where it's better than humans at reading a capture, not worse. Um, so. So, so, like the value of a capture is just diminishing over time. Um, then there's the situation where where they're not actually bots; they're they're people. But like somebody's got like a warehouse somewhere, you know, um, where there's like uh, ten thousand phones. You know, you've got like a hundred people, or uh, for I can say, hundred people each operating a hundred phones. So that's not a bot, and they can all perform the capture. So there's, there's a whole bunch of that going on. In fact, you can see pictures of that on the internet. You could Google it. So um, th there's, there's not like some easy way to get around this, is what I'm saying. Um, it's really difficult. Um, that's, why I, that's why I use bots and trolls. It's like bots are cheap, but trolls are also pretty cheap, um, like a troll farm. So I think uh, you, really to have a high quality poll you have to have some verification, and that verification has to, you know, I think, um, in increase the cost, of, the effective cost of having a water troll, you know, by an order of magnitude or more. Like, so if it, if it costs, like, a, let's say, a penny for a troll vote, um, now if, if, if that's, um, instead they're paying, like, eight or 10 bucks, now you've increased the, the effective cost um, by 10,000, or sorry, by 1,000, I should say, uh, roughly. So that, that, that makes it much harder to scan. Um, anyway, I, I, I got to get back to work here, guys, speaking of work. Um, thanks for coming. Hey, thanks for your time, Elon. Sir. Yeah, thanks, Elon. Really appreciate it. Really yeah. Do. Thank you, Elon. I, I, I guess my, like my plotting words were, 
it was like there's stormy weather ahead, but then it's going to be sunshine thereafter. <laughs> Elon, 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 uh, come on more of these Tesla spaces. Yeah, that would be great. Shareholders love you. They love hearing from you, and it's like sure. really, I think, great for sentiment. So come on more of these spaces with us, and uh, we'll make sure that we give you a good blend of hard questions and easy ones as well. <laughs> Right, Elon, when's good. the 11 coming? What's your best guess? Um, well, we had hopefully, hopefully, uh, before the end of the year. Uh, I mean, we're on B11.2 with the limited beta. Um, but so it's probably, like, I don't know, 11.3. It's, it's pretty soon. It's not like far away. Uh, it's, it's measured in single digit, like, you know, uh, sort of in the roughly. <laughs> nice. That's exciting. Well, yeah, the existing sure. version's amazing. It's been driving me around with no takeovers most of the time. Yeah. Um, the, like, the thing about the B11 is like, there are a bunch of uh, neural nets that are architecturally much better than, than 1069, but, but they, uh, like like they've got much more room to improve. Like like the, 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 the like it's, you know we we're just autopilot has been going through like a series of local maximums, and so but w when you uh, um, exit the local maximum, you first go down before you go up. Um, and so the the neural net architecture in V eleven is is actually a, a, a much better, but uh, it, it it just takes time to. Um, uh, it, it, hone the details, um, but it's it's like I mean it, it I, when I, I it's rare for 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 me to intervene at this point when I drive around. It's like so it's surprising to to like the, the vast majority of trips that I take on autopilot are no zero intervention. So, it bodes well for the future. Chuck, do you have anything to say before he goes? Hey, Elon, thanks for making yourself available. I was just going to say, first of all, thank you for working on hard problems and hard problems such as the unprotected left turn. Do you think that many of the hard problems are going to need that much effort? Do you think it's going to generalize across uh, you know, the, the space? I, I know V11 is a, is a good example of that. I'm just curious if you think that they're going to have to put that much effort towards a lot of these corner cases, or if that was just a good example of how to put engineers to work to, to create a solution both in the simulator and in real life. I mean, this will just be my last last answer. But the the, the, the we're, with every new architecture of um, every new neural, neural net architecture is more generalized than the last time. So so it actually ends up solving not just say uh, ex extended unprotected lefts, but it ends up ex solving a whole bunch of things. Um, so it's it's not like it, it's it's actually uh, with, with with each major rev, there's more and more generalization of solving what is effectively the real world AI problem, and Tesla is, as far as I can tell, overwhelmingly the best at real way, real world AI, um, and we're our rate of progress is increasing, so. All right, with that, uh, it's good talking to you guys and uh, look forward to talking again. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks so much. Cheers, man. Thank here. you, sir. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Yvonne. That was awesome to have him. I mean, wow. Awesome. Hell awesome. yeah. Wow. So many, so many, so many so answers. Needed. Um, the Tesla shareholders need, we made the stock go up, I think. Look at that. Yeah, we, <laughs> we did. We did. We definitely made the stock go up. <laughs> the stock went up like 2%. There we go. Someone Thanks for plugging anyway. in the V11 question, Omar. That was really good. I mean, I, I think you guys. I have to speak for too. the people. The people want to know where V11 is. Yeah, I mean, and what I heard is maybe uh, there's some stuff to work. It didn't sound hard. good. It yeah, not, it didn't. No, they're they're working on it, but this it sounds like still 20, so good right now. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just wanted to say for everyone that's in here, obviously we had like what sixty thousand people in here live at the peak. So thanks for tuning in. Make sure you're following the great host that hosted this space. Um, that brought us up here, Stock Market News. is obviously a fantastic source of news. 
Um, make sure you're following Holes Mars blog, who is probably the, the best Tesla content guy on Twitter, always dropping full self drive videos. And make sure you're following me too. You know, I do talk about Tesla too. And all the rest of the panel, uh, special situations, Gov, Gary, Ross, Rob, Mar, uh, Chuck, Eli, everyone that was up here and everyone that came in throughout the space. So thanks guys for that. But I mean, we're going to continue the conversation, I imagine. So, um, yeah, uh, feel, feel like we have- I feel like we have so much to go. Yeah, I'd love to hear Especially your opinion on these uh, margin on on the margin, on the margin the sales today. Others. Whose opinion did you want on oh, that? Oh, um, you know, any anyone that's that's closely involved. I think there are over five billion in margin sales. I mean, usually when there's four selling in any security, it's interesting to look at. Sometimes it can be an opportunity. Um, you know, just interested in seeing if anyone had any data on on for selling in the in the specific security. Gary, you got any thoughts there? No, but that's not why the stock was going down today. I mean, if I'm a PM, it's a huge red flag and Elon's doing it again, but it's a huge flag, red flag when a CEO blames the stock price decline on Fed rates going up when they're actually going down because inflation's coming down. And the other thing was, and I, I was trying to ask this question, but nobody on, did. On the rebate? Um, why, why would you double the $3,750 promotion in the U.S. one week before the end of the quarter? And again, as PM said to me, that smacks of desperation. Why would you do that? And there's no answer, at least that I heard, but I don't know if anyone No, I, I, I think he said that. He's trying to accelerate. He's trying to improve utilization, accelerate demand by lowering price. Now, whether that's short-term that's bad, week. bad, you know. Yeah, one week. He, he, did, he did touch it just, on it. It looks bad. I mean, bad. the Treasury issued guidance that suggested that they would have a $7,500 tax credit in Q1. So before people were kind of thinking thirty seven fifty, because some of the language in the bill that talked about the source of the raw materials that went into the battery and what levels were needed to qualify. So people were thinking it was going to be thirty seven fifty, but then the Treasury said, OK, we're actually not going to issue guidance until March. And under the law, until we issue guidance, the guidance doesn't take effect. So basically, if you're under the cap on price, if you're under the income limit, and if you know if you're made in North America, you're going to qualify for the seventy five hundred. So they decided to sort of match that for the last nine days. So they're going to have to eat it for nine days, which could cost you know, maybe tens of millions, maybe on in the low hundred millions. But then in Q one and beyond into twenty twenty three, it's going to be covered as a federal tax credit. Right. Yeah, I think that had a lot to do with it too. I, I think that the government's really just messing with all the EV makers with this bullshit by postponing what everybody assumed exact who would qualify. So it kind of like, if I was about to buy a Tesla, like maybe I'm putting off until I'm sure I can get the full thing. So he's just pushing people over the the limit. But look, we all know if people were buying the cars, they wouldn't be offering incentives. There wouldn't be a need to. So, well, he made it clear that higher interest rates make the price of the Tesla more expensive, which is true. It's so not I think, it's well, not it's true. true. It, it just costs more. The four-year four auto loan, if you look at it from end of October to now, it's up about 50 base points. Five-year loan, same thing, because they're tied to the underlying trigger. What, what is the rate on a five-year auto Six loan? Six and a half. Tesla? Six and a half, according to yeah, but the mine Reserve right now, of St. Louis. Yeah, but my car is three. All right, but, but all I'm saying, Ross, is that's not the reason – why people are suddenly saying, oh, I'm not going to buy a Tesla because the auto rate loan has gone from uh, I, I agree with that. I don't think It's that just that not. Would, somebody who needs oh, I think it's part of it. I definitely think it's part of it. And I do think it matters. It's not the main I'm reason. About, it's not the main reason, so, but it's definitely part of it. And this look, EV tax credit, it looks like it's being delayed till March of 2023. Is that right? No, it's not no, being the delayed. No, the credit still counts. It's exactly, exactly the opposite. Saying who qualifies. Right, right. You're going to get the $75 credit whether you buy from GM or Ford or anybody until they clarify the regs. But Tesla, people thought they were going to get it anyway, right? Because everything's made in the U.S. As long as you're under the income limits and the car limits. So I don't think that's that, – I don't understand why they would double the 3750 And I'm telling you, what people I talk to who are nervous PMs, window dressing, whatever they're doing – they worry it like, well, that's that sounds like desperation. Why would you double a promotion for one week? And I can't give them can't give them an answer. And then again, if I'm a PM, it's always a red flag when the CEO is blaming the stock price decline on Fed rates going up. When what drives stock prices ten year rates, not risk free rates. Risk free rates is three months. A ten year rate is actually down since October, 
and Tesla's down fifty uh, percent. Nasdaq. Yeah, flat. that's right. So the Nasdaq PM, is flat. It's, it's, PM, so it's an idiosyncratic. Tim's going to say to me, "It's like, what are you talking about, yeah. there? You know, it's like uh, interest rates are going down. One, if they were going up, it, it would it would affect all tech stocks, not just Tesla, from a duration standpoint. So th- that's the challenge with him. You know, I know Ross. He said securities one hundred and one to you. I I just struggle. I think. What a lot of people say to me, but Gary, but Gary, on that point though, uh, we, and I saw you make that point earlier about you know Tesla massively underperforming the Nasdaq over that period. But isn't using that six month period like kind of arbitrary? I mean, the compression in some of these other mega cap tech stocks happened earlier in the year, so it's like okay, Tesla didn't compress at the same time that they did, but it also held up way better than every other mega cap t- stock during that period. So it's like maybe it was just Tesla's turn. Um, to take that compression. I don't think it's we can directly tie it to the fact that like, hey, since October, you know, you're looking at like long bonds and and you're making that deduction. But I mean, look at the rest of the market since the beginning of the year. To me, it just feels like this was just a delayed compression. No, I think I think no, I think I think it's both. I think Gary's right. I think. Go ahead. Well, well, Ross, hold on. Let Ross, let Jay go and then Gary will go. Let's go one at a time. So I I think there's some truth to what you're saying, Stock Talk. I do think that there's some truth to what Gary's saying. You know, the actual stock sales, right, combined with, you know, the the rhetoric, combined with confusion around management and spending time on Twitter, combined with, you know, several other data points you've seen, you know, the issues in China, now this rebate that doubled. And, you know, I'm not an expert on the rebate, so... Thank you, and you know, for you guys for for bringing that to my t- my attention. But I think there's several, you know, idiosyncratic reasons why Tesla has underperformed the Nasdaq in the past, you know, 30 days. I don't. Th- I think that's undeniable. Now, was it bound to see multiple compression anyway? Perhaps, but you know, I do think that you can't argue that. You know, the sales that we're seeing, you know, going into the end of the year are are very unnatural. Yeah. Look, uh, look, the point I was trying to say, I agree with what you just said, that when you sell over, you know, a year, $40 billion of basically newly issued shares, these are from other people out onto the market. And once again, you have all these other macro factors, you have a weak stock market, and then you've got this Twitter stuff. And then if you really think about it, we were all saying, oh, the Twitter overhang will be lifted once the deal is done. And what happened? A couple weeks later, Twitter runs out of money and he drops $10 billion more of new stock on the market in a weak market when the stock was at 200 He broke the stock. Okay, So you can't put tons of supply of stock out in a weak market in a recessionary environment with higher rates and not expect a major market decline. So I think it's a combination of things, but I, I think blaming the economy is not right. I think it's part of it, so, but it's not the, you know, the factors we talked about are, are bigger contributor in the near term. So I have a question, and this is the other question I want to ask him. Is there any data that shows the Tesla brand equity is or is not being impacted by all the drama at Twitter? And again, the quote, this is Elon's quote from two days ago, Twitter is like an airplane flying at high speed about to crash and burst into flames. And we all know there's huge brand association between Elon Musk, Twitter and Tesla. So what he says is going to be noise. It's going to be, you know, the general public who doesn't follow the stock like we do. They just hear about bursting and crashing into flames from Elon Musk. So do we have any data or do they have any data? Tesla that says the brand is not being impacted by all this noise. Didn't he say that? He said that on on the uh, on the call. He was. He, what data does he? No, have? I think well, time I, will I, tell. I don't think anyone really knows. I, think, I mean, he's not going to be able to. Obviously, with due respect, he's not going to be able to go through the order book. Um, but he said he said he goes. I don't believe this is having any impact. I and mean, he made a pretty definitive statement. But I mean, and Gary. I mean, but Gary, how would you quantify brand impact reliably anyway? I mean, that, all the metrics that people use to quantify brand impact are, are pretty unreliable regardless. So even if he did bring you some data, like, would it be convincing? I don't think so. You could look, at when, there's, to quantify. You could look at when there's events on Twitter and do you see orders dry up? Yeah, if you, you have real-time no, order, real order, order data, I agree. We, orders, orders haven't dried up. I mean, look, all he had to do is say orders haven't dried up and we're not seeing any degradation in our sales in the fourth quarter because of all the noise. But, but Gary, what is degradation in sales? 
Degradation of sales immediately translate to the fact that the brand has been damaged because no. of his political. No. So that's what I'm saying uh, even if we used order data and sales data to make some kind of inference to say, OK, Tesla's br- brand has been affected by what Elon has done. There's still other factors that are going to impact impact sales data. Right. But the, the problem but you is can benchmark you those CEO, other factors, right? You can benchmark you got versus other companies. But you, if if there's some something idiosyncratic, like if I if I were to say something, you know, demeaning and I lost, you know, customers overnight, you could see, you know, versus the week or the month. But Jay, let's reduce this to consumer psychology, though, right? Like if you're a consumer, OK, and you were going to buy a Tesla and then Elon tweeted something that you didn't like, like. Are most consumers drawing that correlation? No, but it doesn't matter about most consumers. It, what matters is on the margin. This is a high growth company. 1% growth differential can affect a stock a lot. Hey, Jay, you how, know, many, you how know, much do you On the say margin, are some margin consumers call? taking the political takes and maybe being, you know... I mean, the media swayed. might, be, yeah, might sure, be part but... of it, right? The media is taking this out of proportion. But when you have this much negative information about anything... Right out in the public, it's going to affect consumer decision making to some degree. And it's obviously 99 out of 100, even if 99 out of, out of 100 people don't care, if that one or t- one person cares or two people care, it matters. Omar, what was your question? Oh, uh, I was just excited. asking, Jay mentioned earlier, how much were the uh, margin calls you said today on Tesla? I had seen something on Twitter. That's why I asked, because I don't have the data myself. I had seen something someone posted who has a lot of followers and has been right on a few calls about five billion of margin calls i don't have that data i wanted to see if someone could where that data is coming from and if they could confirm it wow. real, real quick just because um i only have another like two minutes that i can talk really enjoying this i wanted to just for those that joined up late into the space uh, just the two major things that are takeaways from what elon said on the space is he said under no under any circumstances he won't be selling any tesla shares uh next year that was the biggest thing on this yeah, space. That's, that's really what stopped, what, that's that's what moved the stock. Yeah, that that's was very positive. Saying. And then the and then the other piece was saying that Tesla's board is open to a buyback. No, I thought that was negative. Looks, I think I actually interpreted I, I, well, that well, as negative. The way that he said it. The way I think it was it, very he negative the in the way price, he said it. He's well, focused just, on internal growth. Just, the, well, it's like JJ, the language was the stock price is absurdly low. My yeah. vote would be to do a buyback. That's no, it was the timing that. I think I think everyone assumed he would he was going to do something to support the stock price. Yeah, let's 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 keep going. I I definitely do think the the thing that we're open to doing a buyback if it isn't 2008. Right. So it will it will eventually be a catalyst. But I viewed it as in the short term, they're not going to do anything. But your former. I I think he's being very prudent. I think he's being prudent. I agree. And I don't think he needs to buy stock right away for any reason when he's definitely concerned about a recession. You know, there's no doubt in my mind that the events from five years ago scarred him about taking too much financial risk with his companies. That it's, it became obvious in the conversation that he's not taking the types of financial risks he was taking five years ago. And in fact, I think he's moved the opposite direction where now he's being ultra conservative because he wants to never be put in that BK situation again, which is why he over liquidated stock to make sure he had enough money for Twitter. So I, I, I think that the buyback is unnecessary at the moment. And I think there'll be an opportunity next year for Tesla to do it. And it'll be just as effective. But yes, I also want to thank everybody. With that. I, I just wanted to thank everybody. I got to jump, but I love this community and, and I, and I love Tesla and this is what makes Tesla great is all the people on this call that absolutely care about a sustainable future and seeing Tesla successful. So I appreciate everybody's support. I love this group of people and, and I wish everybody well. Yeah, yeah thanks for coming, Ron. Thanks, thanks for the you. thanks for your, your commentary and your insights. And and right at one more time for stock for stock market news, I just want to give one more big shout out for those that don't know, if this was like your first base finding him, you came in here because of Elon. Stock market news literally just sits there all day tweeting news about everything in the stock market there's a heavy focus obviously on the more popular stocks but if you're looking to keep up with this type of stuff and i'm sure elon's gonna be back on more of his spaces i mean he got ten thousand followers during the space i recommend you add to that pile if you haven't already go ahead and give him a follow and then the two co-hosts on here are just outstanding co-hosts with whole mars and stock talk just complete wealth of knowledge from both of them uh i love doing spaces with them regularly so you really can't go wrong if you're you learn something every time be doing more with Elon. Yeah, you, you always, always learn with these guys and the rest of this panel as well.
Hey, can I add to one of the? I agree with all that. Can I add to one of the huge takeaways, which was for Appreciate that dog, yeah. for for next for next year? He said, if there's a kind of a balance between margins or or, or driving volume, he's going to lean on driving volume, which really aligns with the Tesla message, mission. That's what it seemed like to so, me. I mean, this this doubling of this credit and the fact that he's focused on demand, and it just seems like my gut instinct is he's focused more on demand than than on 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 margin which as a as an equity investor is a short-term negative long-term positive if you're focused on taking market share yeah investors in tesla want to see volume they don't care if the margin is not 30 percent. they they just want to see as high volume growth as you can get and that's that's what's going to move the stock and look the next data point is is january 2nd when they announce fourth quarter volumes and everybody's going to read into it and if it's if it misses the 430 which is the number everybody's looking for which is, I don't know, 42% year-over-year growth, then people are going to say, okay, the brand is being impacted by all the noise. I don't agree with that, but that's what you're going to hear from the media, I guarantee but he, it. But he made a great point, which is you can actually take the margin a little bit down to drive volume, mm-hmm. and then you've still got sort of the software services that are running on the car, the $200 a month full self-driving subscription, or you can roll it into your car loan for $15,000, the insurance, the premium connectivity, all of these different software services that the legacy autos, you know, typically haven't been able to utilize because they didn't really have this car as a computer product that could sort of, you know, Augment help them maintain the pretty reasonable margins, even if they have to cut prices at the base models. And, 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 you know, this is the point too, like, and that was actually one question that we didn't get to ask him that, that I would have liked to ask him was his view on the distinction between Tesla being, you know, a car company and a tech company. I know that, you know, me, Gary and, and Omar probably agree on this is, being generally Tesla bulls, or at least we have been for the last, or I have been since 2015. I know Omar's owned it for years and, and Gary, you as well. But, you know, being from that perspective, it, it feels like he made it pretty clear, even in the way he was talking about the energy business, you know, even when I brought up tex- Tesla electricity, like there are verticals here that Tesla has that have not been scaled. Um, they haven't been focused on and, and they could add significant amounts of revenue down the road, especially the mega pack business, which I think is being really overlooked. And you know, even Elon kind of talked about it as having like infinite demand is, is what he used the term he used. But, you know, there's a lot of other verticals at play here that I think just even a, a superficial glance at the business would make you realize that in the long term, this isn't a car business. Yeah. Today, is it? Yeah. Ninety five percent of the revenue comes from the car business. I get it. But. You know, I made the same analogy to Apple, right? Like if you combine services revenue and iPhone revenue, that's like 70% of Apple's revenue just there. Just those two categories. And it's like, we don't call Apple a phone business. And so I think- But Apple is a phone business, right? Well, I mean, I mean, yeah, but does anyone reduce it to that, mm-hmm. right? I don't think so. People refer to it as a devices business or a tech business, right? And because there's other things, other layers of products that you can add over time that distinguish the company. But, you know, I think Elon actually even referred to it as a car business, which today it is. But I'm really optimistic in the very long run about them being able to scale at least one of those verticals. And I think the energy storage mega pack business, utility scale batteries is a sleeper. And that could be a multi-hundred billion dollar business annually that I think people are just dramatically overlooking, in my view. Yeah, a lot of people in sort of the Twitter community have been talking about the Tesla energy business and the mega packs and how this could be a really big business that a lot of people aren't looking at. So it was interesting to see Elon make a comment about him seeing, quote unquote, infinite demand in that market. I think he meant infinite demand because literally every municipality on Earth could purchase one. And at the, at a certain point of cost efficiency, it would be worth it. Obviously not today, but at a certain point of cost efficiency, which, you know, if you have any kind of belief in, in innovation of any kind, whether it's at a stable rate or not, over the next five years, they're going to get cheaper. And, you know, once you can make the case to municipalities around the country and around the globe, like, hey, you should have a utility scale battery. It's going to stabilize your grid and it's going to be energy efficient for the entire community. That, that decision is a pretty straightforward decision. And the fact that they've already proved the concept, again, like it's odd to me that a lot of Wall Street just does refuses to do anything but look at this as a car business in a vacuum and to attempt to rate it that way. And I know it hasn't traded that way for the last three years, but you know that's due to a variety of, of factors. But um but that's yeah, how wall I, street I works right you, i mean you can't put wall street on a pedestal they look at quarters they don't look at years 
that's how it's worked since no, the nineties or the eighties. I mean, yeah, you're absolutely that's right. Not true. That's not true, guys. Come on, people look two, three, four years out. I look two, three, four years out. I think even within a shop like our shop, I love the fact that they cut price by thirty-seven fifty because it increases the odds that they can hit their volumes, and it shows to me that volume is more important than margin. My partner Dave hated the fact that they cut price, so I think most Wall Street takes a longer-term view. That you know, the quarters are just confirmation that things are on track. I mean, but how much confidence can you have on a four-year view? You don't, but but I look. The reason I like the stock is because EV adoption is going from ten percent to sixty percent by twenty thirty, and earnings are going to go from I don't know. We'll call it you know five fifty next year to about twenty by twenty twenty six, and I can put a pretty high valuation on that, assuming the volumes grow at forty percent. And what assumption but would I you never... use on sixty percent EV adoption by twenty thirty? How how is that possible? Well, we're at 10 today, and it's growing very rapidly. If you look at China and Europe, they're already close to 20%. China's above 20%. In the U.S., once you get the EV credit in place, you're going to see them go up the curve pretty quickly on EV adoption. I believe that. But look, that, I, I was just arguing with the point that everybody on Wall Street is, is quarter to quarter. That, that is not the case. I'm not. I don't, I don't think like that. I think there are people that when they see a quarter and it misses, and that's why the 430 number for the fourth quarter is important, they're going to draw conclusions about is the brand being impacted by all this Twitter drama. And this is, we don't have a PR department to offset that. You're going to have the media draw that conclusion. I guarantee it. You know, they got to stand up and say, you know, we're not seeing any, any impact to our brand equity because of what's happening or not happening on Twitter. They need to say that. And then the second thing, the the other thing I say is, I'm sorry, they need to find a Twitter CEO so that Elon can say, you know, I'm no longer running Twitter. And that's that's important. And I, I don't know. Do you guys have a sense of is it's going to take one month, two months? I think it's going to take a long time. I think well, I was c- taken aback by the fact that he's still going to be running a department after that poll, you know, regardless of what this, you know, what CEO is is in place. See, I think the board is putting pressure on him. I don't know any board that would let somebody moonlight as a CEO for, you know, another totally brand new company that you are building from the ground up. I, I, you can't count SpaceX or Neuralink or Boring because Elon built them and he hired the teams. But Twitter is it's like you're building it, you're rebuilding it from ground zero. That's a lot more work than you know SpaceX or Neuralink or Boring, which he hired those people to run it. But Gary, he, he said repeatedly it's it's in orders of magnitude less complicated. But, the, but he has yeah, to say that. that. So he might be right, but he almost well, has to say that. But maybe, probably, it's, right? maybe it's true. Also, I'd just like to say this grant. Um, he made, I, I don't own a Tesla. I'm, I'm literally ordering one right now after that conversation, and I will buy the stock tomorrow. So I love the conversation. Um, I love the transparency. Who else is doing that? I did not know the company didn't have have any debt. I don't know if that was literal or he's saying they have very little. They debt. have no net debt. They have a they have a net cash position. That, well, going to this cycle, uh, that that make, makes him the only automotive company on planet Earth with zero debt, it, which would be the greatest expense you can have uh, manufacturing cars particularly in a 7% environment. Yeah, just to be clear on the debt thing, it's it's better than just being in a, in a net cash position. They have extremely little debt and $20 billion in cash. So it's it's not just net cash. No, that's the that's definition of net cash. Balance. They have a little bit of debt and a lot of cash. That's the definition. Yeah, I'm just making it clear that the debt is extremely low. Now, what Tesla do I buy? Which one should I buy? Everyone here is going to have an opinion, so you guys can chime in. Yeah, you probably want the Model S or the Model X. That's the top of the line. If you want something that's more affordable, then you got the 3 and the Y. The 3 is a sedan, Y is an SUV. And yeah, they're amazing cars. It'll put a smile on your face every day. Which one gives Tesla the biggest margin? Let's get him in that one right now. <laughs> no, I'm yeah, probably kill, the S. Kill, kill, kill me on one of them. The S? Cybertruck. Yeah, I'm sitting in a Model X right now. It's amazing. I'm installing Grand Theft Auto on the car. It can play video games. It's got like a game console quality GPU. Cool. 
but definitely, uh, I think the biggest time I, I think the, the stock started to move around that I'm done selling stock. Uh, he did say two years, but um, he also said like I'm not gonna sell till 2025. I agree with you. Um, but but yeah, I, I think that was definitely the one. And also, it was interesting. I was watching the uh, terminal notifications. It started rolling after that comment, so it wasn't caught up uh, instantly in there. So I wonder if there will be something going after this. But, but yeah. Um, I'm curious if anyone had any thoughts on the test of, on the Twitter front. Sorry, uh, of anything Elon said in there. If there was any topics or kind of any points that they thought they were interesting. No, I mean I think you made a great point about it not being as complicated as Tesla and SpaceX. And I actually tweeted that exact thing a few weeks ago. Somebody made the suggestion that he was spending more time at Twitter than Tesla, and I was like, even if he is for a week or two, the idea that that'll be a long term trend is hilarious because. Twitter's not rocket science. SpaceX quite literally is. So, um, I mean, know, the, that, issue, that the issue, though, is I, made, I 100% but... agree with you. The issue with that is it might be a six-month project, one-year project. If you've been on the board of a distressed company, and I have, when a company's in distress and it's burning $3 billion a year, you have to devote an inordinate amount of effort and time and knowledge and hiring people and budgeting and doing weekly and monthly budgets. It's a lot of work. It's a lot more work. But than don't you, can you think, think he knows enough good capital managers, Jay? Like it would just laid off of like seven thousand people. And, no, I know. And, but you don't think he can bring in a I'm couple? I'm sure he can, but it takes a lot of time managers. to bring in smart people. And why keep yeah. saying nobody would be foolish enough to take this job? Why keep dissuading good people from applying from the job? Why do that? I mean, I would think he'd want to bring in somebody great who wants the job. Why scare people away from it? I mean, I think he would want whoever would to come in because it's a private company and because he just paid $44 billion for it. Like, yeah, I don't think he'd bring in Lex. Like, this isn't, I'm not suggesting that. But when he had the conversation with Lex publicly and Lex was like, oh, I'll be CEO, he was like, yeah, I want you to invest your entire life savings. So it's like, I don't know, maybe that'll be his, his condition to whoever wants to come in as CEO. I have no clue. But, you know, my point is, is that he, I, I just don't think he wants to be, Look, there's a lot of things he said, Gary, and you know this, right? That included, along with a lot of other things that he's tweeted, that he knows are bad for the stock price. He's not an idiot, but yeah. he just doesn't care. No, I actually I mean, we like that the best about him, he just care. that he was very honest about certain things that other CEOs wouldn't have been. And I, I appreciated that for sure. I mean, he said that himself. Yeah. He was like, look, I'm not going to I'm not going to not share my beliefs and be honest just because I know it's going to affect the stock price. He said that word for word when he was up here. I mean, it's pretty rare to hear a CEO say, yeah, with interest rates rising, you know, demand for our product is going to fall. But I thought in, one other really important thing is that he just reaffirmed his commitment to Tesla. He said, look, Tesla's my number one. Twitter's just sort of the situation I have to get into. The perception is that I'm spending all my time on Twitter, but I haven't missed a meeting. This is obviously still something that it's a job I have to do. Look, I give him a lot of respect. Most CEOs are not going to come on a call like this when the stock's down 50% and everybody's pissed off. So I give him loads of credit for, you know, at least coming on and addressing the big issues. I just, I don't like when he blames things. And no, no PM likes it when you blame things on the Fed when the rest of NASDAQ is doing just fine. And, and I know he's talking about the stock price. He's not really talking about the business. But loan rates have not gone up that much since the stock started getting really hammered, which was October. They really haven't gone up much at all. So that's my concern. And look, I believe the Fed is not stupid. I think the Fed is going to see we're going to get inflation number tomorrow morning. I believe the Fed's going to see that inflation is coming down. That's why long-term rates have come down. Long-term rates are down from 4% to 37 today. It's because inflation has been coming down. And I think the Fed's going to see that. And if growth rates really start to decelerate into next year, the Fed's never going to get to 5% on the federal funds rate. They'll start taking them down. So, but Gary, The 30-year rate, Gary, was almost like, at 4.5% in October when, with the guilt scare. It's actually, actually down a lot. It's down at 70 basis points. That's my point. And my point is that when you look at Tesla, going through the end of September, Tesla was beating uh, NASDAQ by 800 basis points, down 25 versus down 33. All of the, 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 the plunge in the stock price has been since October 1st. And two things happened. Chicago, or China numbers missed, and he bought Twitter. And all the Twitter noise started. And the advertisers left, and, and we had to screw up with the, you know, the, the Twitter blue thing where you know, uh, Mario was putting his middle finger up at everybody. 
you know, that's the type of thing that scares advertisers away. And what I want to hear from Elon is he's going to find somebody who can get those advertisers back because that's what's going to stop the cash bleed. Hey, Gary, when do you think analysts are going to take, I mean, every hour I I look on TV, they're saying, you know, demand, demand, demand. When are they going to take the 430 consensus down? <laughs> I don't know. Seems I like mean, a game. Troy's taking his numbers down. Troy's taking it is, a, it is a game. You bring it down and then you beat it. That's the game. That's the Wall Street game everyone plays. Well, here, here's here's the question. So, so on, on the third quarter conference call, Zach said just under fifty percent deliveries growth year over year, which gives you a number for the fourth quarter of you know four sixty four seventy. If you're trying to hit forty seven, is just under, or is it where Wall Street is? Wall Street ignored that, by the way. And said, "No, we're thinking more from the bottom up. We're more at 4:30." And I see Troy at 4:19 or something. So I just I, I think everybody is worried that when Elon is blaming the Fed and they raise uh, prices, I'm sorry, they cut, they, you know, they, they cut prices in the last week. They're worried that things must be really bad, or they wouldn't be doing that with one week left in the quarter. I don't see it that way. I'm just telling you how the market's interpreting it. You know, it's our largest position, so we're on. You know, we're in it for the long haul. We're not in it for the short haul. And look, there's so many catalysts next year. You know, FSD. You know, launch across the board is a huge catalyst. Cybertruck, a huge catalyst. I, I, one of the takeaways I got from them was the thirty thousand dollar car is, you know, definitely something they're thinking about and work on. That's a huge catalyst. New Gigafactories is a big catalyst. A buyback at some point's a big catalyst. So there's a ton of catalysts for next year, and the stock price is so cheap. Gary, where do you think the gross margin falls? You know, every one percent of gross margin is like 800 million to the PNL. What do you think is the sustainable gross margin for the next, you know, let's just say year or two? I, I don't know. I, I've got my margins going up, you know, pretty steadily, like six, you know, from I don't know, like uh, let's call it from six six. 28.5 to 29.5 to 30.5. Um, yeah, I've got for 22, I've got 28.2. Then I've got to go into 28.8 for next year and 29.5 for the next year. But I would much rather him take a couple points off of that and get more volume. That would be better from my standpoint. And the street would like that better. Tesla is still viewed as a growth company, but now people are questioning how quickly the growth is going to be. And that's what you're seeing in the stock price crashing since October, fifty percent in three months is a big decline, guys. I mean, I, I don't. Well, there's no no questioning, stocks. no questioning it there. You're right. That's a big number. And what what people need to feel comfortable with is one, he's going to step down from Twitter. Whether or not he spends a lot of time there is the perception is he is spending a lot of time there. So they they need to see that. That would help. Two, they've got to restore confidence that the volumes can grow. You know, at, let's call it forty percent. The streets right now looking for thirty percent over the next few years. Um, and then they got to hit some of their targets for like, you know, cyber truck, the $30,000 vehicle, you know, buying more gigafactories. Cause if you can't buy more gigafactories, you're never going to get to, you know, even 10, 10, million units by 2030, which is what I have. I have other people that have 20 million units. So they, they got to do those things. And, you know, a buyback is, is kind of icing on a cake. I agree with people. It's not going to move it that much. But it's just a big vote of confidence that they're sending to the market saying, look, we think the stock's really cheap and we're putting our money where the mouth is. But I'd much rather them if it, he said it today, he said, we're, we're, we're spending the money as quickly as we can, which is, sell, is telling me that if they keep generating cash at the rate of, you know, five billion a quarter, which is what they're generating, it's all going to go into cash at three, four percent. And that's that's not that's not good. Yeah, he has no choice but to reinvest with the growth rates that the street is seeing, he has to be building a couple of gigafactories every year, if not more. But he's saying he can't spend it all. Yeah. He's, and he's right. I mean, he's been doing that. They could accelerate the gigafactories. He, what did he say in the call today, two or three? Yeah, he couldn't give the exact number and the timing, obviously, but. But but those are big positive catalysts that if you announce like UK is getting a gigafactory and Mexico is getting a gigafactory and maybe, you know, I don't know, somewhere in, in Asia outside of China is getting a gigafactory. Those would be well received uh, by investors. Pe- people on Wall Street want to see reinvestment in the in the company. It's just they've seen the numbers in the last couple of quarters. It just drops into cash. You're going to see, you know, the cash is going to be 25 billion this quarter from what 19 and third quarter. I mean, it's going to be another five billion of cash. 
And you know, people are wondering why is the, why is the board not buying back stock? Do they do they not think it's cheap? I don't know. I, I think he's doing the right thing. I think he should focus on reinvesting, and, and the buyback can be later in 2023. But but I think you're listen. You know a lot more about this business than I do. I'm kind of looking at it as a trader, but from a trading perspective, you know, I I, I tend to think that there's going to be a gross margin inflection over the next couple quarters. You know probably by mid 2023 lower and that's going to start to get priced in but if everyone cares about demand numbers then you know then he's focusing on the right thing then and he clear yeah, yeah i think the most important thing is the business survives then we can worry about you know the buyback and that sort well, of he thing. clearly said that he's going to pivot the volume and that just aligns with the mission of tesla and his it's his mission he clearly said he's going to pivot the volume And I'm going to go back to this because I don't know the answer to this. I wish I did. How much has the Tesla brand uh, been impacted by all this noise? I just don't know. And when he says things like, well, it's the Fed, it just scares people. Like, what is he hiding? Because most CEOs are not going to blame it on the Fed. They just aren't. Not when NASDAQ is flat and their stock's down 50%. It's right. Just... Well, most CEOs wouldn't even give an answer, right? They would just talk around it. But <laughs> Yeah, maybe, maybe. So, look, we're sticking with it. We haven't sold a single share, and we believe in the stock. We believe very much in Elon. We just wish he would focus, you know, 24-7 on, on Tesla and, you know, not put so much time in Twitter. And I, I can't tell you how much time he's spending on Twitter. It, just, it seems like he, he spends a lot of time on Twitter. Maybe I'm wrong. You should show us the screen time over the last uh, year. Uh, only way to prove that one. You know, I was entering this thinking there would be some positive, like some externalities where, you know, the Twitter, you know, he could use Twitter as free marketing at some point, right? Because in, in, in leverage of the brand, but in the short term, that's almost backfired. And, you know, it's in his power now to turn that back around. Um, I never, I never thought that perspective though. Like when people were like, "Oh, he's going to use Twitter as like an engine to advertise SpaceX and Tesla." Like, what? He's going to buy for forty-four billion dollars? No, and it's then get not like he's going to pay for advertising. But he's been getting free advertising from Twitter for years, right? With the following he has, he every time he comes out with a new feature, all he has to do is tweet it, and hundreds of millions of people see it, right? He didn't so, buy Twitter to somehow manifest that influence into into a more controllable mechanism like he like he already had a massive amount of influence he was already a celebrity ceo before he acquired twitter so i i really don't think that that had anything to do with his intention i mean he tweeted the other week like i'm gonna make sure in the long run twitter benefits uh you know tesla shareholders but from my perspective, it's like, but but even if it wasn't right, everyone who how was looking it? at the acquisition was thinking that, and now it's kind of backfired. Yeah, I don't think it has anything to do with Tesla. I think Twitter is he bought Twitter for some other reason, and if there is a data play to be made, which again I still believe that. I know some people think it's tinfoil hat of me to believe that. I just found his comment last week to be even more a testament to that fact when he's like, "Yeah, I'll, I'll give up CEO, but I'll stay on as." head of software and servers. I think there's something he's looking for in the treasure trove. I mean, how long well, he's trying to protect around? his 44 billion. That's what he's trying to do. When, when was Twitter? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Does anyone know when Twitter was founded? It was like 2005, 2006. I could be wrong. Okay. So whatever. Was March, maybe, he's taken, maybe he's taken that 15 years of data on Twitter and wants to do something with it or thinks he can use it in some manner for some other software or, or data application. I don't know, but it seems odd to me that he just bought this, purely for the i want to save free speech perspective oh, I don't no, think definitely that's not I he wanted to think... make money he just got in early in the cycle yeah but i don't even think it's about necessarily they... i don't even think he believes he can turn twitter into a highly profitable company right away either but well, I, think I think he that... does i think he thinks within you know, five years he thinks he can basically take twitter public at a higher valuation he wouldn't he wouldn't have bought it if he didn't think he could make money on it it was a diversification play. I don't think he's looking to make money on it anytime soon. I think he wants to make it sustainable, but I don't think he's trying to turn this into a cash flow machine. I think there's another, I could be wrong. I mean, we'll find out, right? But I think there's, there's an ulterior motive and we'll find out what that motive is. But 
Um, yeah, there's something else at play here. I just don't understand a lot of like the timing and there was a lot of things to this that just defied logic to me. And I don't consider him to be an idiot. I don't think that he is an idiot. I don't think anyone's going to make the argument that he is an idiot. And so some of the decisions he made around it just didn't make sense to me. And obviously he tried to rationalize them, but, um, you know, again, and this isn't a knock at Elon. I have a lot of confidence, you know, the utmost confidence in Elon as a manager of businesses, as a delegator, as a visionary, like I, I can't name a single person on earth that I would rather be a CEO of a company, to be honest. But, you know, I just don't know if we know his full plan here. I don't know if we know his next step of his quote unquote master well, plan. Well, I think he wanted to create like a new WeChat stuff. and that's how he got Saudi involved and Larry Ellison involved. They all want to make money, right? Yeah, he, he just, I think, misjudged the ire of advertisers and look, he's not from the advertising business. I am. And it's, you got to, you got to dine these people and wine them and, you know, just kiss up to them. And it's just a whole, he's a, he's a mathematical It's completely guy. different. I, I have a friend who a runs an different... ad, ad, advertising agency. He used to take the head of state street marketing on NASCAR driving trips in Florida. Like you have to, it's not the same as an, as an engineering business. And, it, and Elon disdains that type world. And he's got to find somebody who can navigate that world and get the advertisers to at least pay the bills until he can get user fees up, monetize the user fees, monetize the e-commerce uh, platform. And so his vision is, is, is dead on. What, he, what he's doing with Twitter is exactly right, but I don't think he counted on the fact that all these advertisers would drop him so quick. So he's got to find somebody who could bring those advertisers back to pay the bills, in my opinion. And he will. He'll figure that out. As long as it's not Marissa Myers, I'm okay with, with whoever he brings in. <laughs> Everybody, people don't like her. They don't like Sheryl Sandberg. You know, people don't like Brett Tell. I don't know who How could you hire Sheryl Sandberg after she misappropriated funds and used Facebook funds to pay for her own wedding and to fund charities? I don't understand how well, people could do true. that. That's true. That's a bad thing, but we don't know if that's 100% true. I Look, I don't know who the right person is. I just think... On the criteria list, it has to be somebody who can regain the trust of advertisers or Elon's going to be paying the bills for a long time. you got to get the advertisers back because it's 92% of the revenues. I mean, that's, that's, just, that's a cold, hard fact that you have to, you have to get them back, at least for a couple He said of on years. the Twitter space a couple so, nights ago that he has a path to cash flow break even in Twitter next, next year. Well, that's true because he cut you know, 60 to 70% of the costs. But I don't know what assumptions he's making about getting the advertising back. I think getting Tim Cook back in is huge. Getting Amazon in is huge because those, those are bellwethers and people will follow them. And so when you go out to advertisers, it's not just ROI. It's, it's showing the efficacy of the Twitter platform. It's making people feel comfortable. There's not going to be bad product adjacency, meaning you're not going to have Super Mario next to my, my ad, okay? And it is ROI. You've got to be able to calculate ROI and, and articulate it to people. And he's got to do those three things. But I don't. I, I just don't see him doing that. That's just not his skill set. He likes software and he likes you know product development. And I think if he hired a business person to run Twitter, it would complement him well as long as he lets that person do their job, you know, which is go out and build 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 revenues and get more user fees and let him work on the product. That, I think that would be that would be great. Well, I think the fact that he's not planning sales for a couple of years, uh, I think he's got more confidence huge. in that business as obviously as well as Tesla. So it's a huge takeaway. Yeah. That's a huge takeaway. That's why the stock's up, whatever it's up. It's it's that's a big thing for him to say that. And I took this the share buyback comments as positive. I didn't I didn't take it as negative. I, I I think he's just being realistic that if there's a recession, he doesn't want to be buying when the stock is too high. But, it, you know, I believe the Fed is not stupid. I think the Fed's going to see that inflation's coming down and they're going to pivot and it's going to be, you know, relatively quick. It's not going to be, you know, two years from now. So. I agree. So, I, mean, I got to jump off, guys. Thanks for everything. Thanks for inviting me up to speak. Appreciate it. Really appreciate you coming, Gary. I'm, I'm definitely a fan of your tweets and uh, was a, a fan of a lot of your input here. If anyone down below hasn't followed Gary, uh, definitely a, a fantastic, a really smart uh, person in general and definitely a, a great Twitter account to be following. We're lucky to have his insights on here. Appreciate you joining in, Gary. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. And also, yeah.
I appreciate everyone else joining in before as well. Omar, we had a lot of really fa- smart and fantastic people on the space. Obviously, Elon, uh, big props and, and appreciation to him coming on the space. Uh, so just make sure you're following the people that, that have said smart things. I will make sure the recording gets up. Uh, this Twitter space, the second it ends, the recording will be available right there. And I'm working right now to get it clipped up. So it's just that 45 minutes or so, maybe 30, I don't know. Uh, I have no idea how long it was, but uh, uh, when Elon was on here, so we could just hear that. My goal is to get that up before tomorrow's open, um, but we'll see uh, on that. Uh, I'll definitely link to that. But yeah, major appreciation to everyone that came up. And uh, yeah, if anyone has anything they want to say right here, if not, I'm going to throw it over to AJ, who I just brought up. Uh, I actually have a question for Jay. Um, earlier, he mentioned about the $5 billion in margin costs for, for Tesla. I think we could all agree the actual margin position is far greater than $5 billion. So I was wondering what you guys think the actual pain point is where a lot of the people on margin are going to get screwed. Jay, did you hear that? I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't hear that. Go ahead. Uh, Jay, uh, earlier you mentioned the $5 billion in in margin on Tesla, that, that was a uh, uh, margin call today. Um, I think we could all agree the actual margin position in Tesla is far greater than five billion. Right. So it wasn't. It is, wasn't the what... entire margin position. It was right, that right. a certain percentage so, of that was forced to sell. Right. So my question is, at what price point do you believe it is it, it is is the price where a lot of these people on margin get squeezed? I think you would have to figure out what their what their cost basis is. I, I don't have that information on hand. Yeah, the reason I ask is because um, we all saw it um, slip below that 150, kind of like butter. It didn't really fold, even though it looked like it was going to be support, right? So, I mean, the stock is down, what, like 70% from the, from the peak? So I think we're getting pretty close to the, uh, to the peak point. You know what? I don't think when people say that type of stuff, I don't think the percentage from peak matters at all. It's just like a random number. I think what what will really matter is what people's cost bases are. Like when someone says like, listen, Carvana was down 80% of the, from the peak. I was still short. It went to 98% from the peak, right? Like I'm not saying this is related at all. I'm just saying like those statistics, it's 70% down from peak, 50, 40, even 90% down from the peak can still go down 50%. And I think there needs to be some sort of forensic analysis into like, and I don't think anyone has the data except for the brokers, like what the cost basis is to figure out. I don't think anyone has the ability to predict margin calls. That wasn't the purpose of the question. I was just trying to figure out like what the, what the size was potentially over time. Okay. Thanks, Jay. Sure thing. Hey, thanks for having me on. Um, my, my only point was actually to Gary Black, uh, unfortunate that he left. But um, the point about Elon Musk um, trying to dissuade uh, potential CEOs to come on the platform, uh, personally, I think, is, a, is an on-ramp to more revenues. Um, he's trying to popularize the space enough to bring other people on. Um, so, you know, we already know he's trying to take outside investors for Twitter after I already purchased it. And uh, personally, um, I was trying to get Gary's um, thoughts on this, but uh, Elon is just trying to popularize it enough to bring on, um, you know, on ramp more money. Uh, he's a, you know, a bright guy and with Tesla down as much as it is this year. Obviously, he has to do what he can to uh, batten down the hatches on that front, but as I said, it's unfortunate that Gary wasn't here. Um, kind of wanted to hear his opinion on that, but uh, thanks for having me up. I appreciate it. AJ, thanks for bringing that up. Just like some, just a quick thought. Like when people talk about levels and what they think valuations are, where a stock can go, it doesn't really matter in a bear market. I was talking to a prominent PM today. He was like, this is where I would buy Amazon, you know, in the 60s. And, you know, if I talked to you like a year ago and I said, you know, Amazon could potentially touch the 60s or Google, could, you could buy Google in the 70s, you know, at, you know, a single digit to your forward EBITDA multiple, you would have thought I was completely nuts. And, you know, the conclusion is that when you guys think about levels or this will help you in your risk management, things can go a lot lower than you can perceive, even if it's a good company. So, so keep that in mind when you say like, oh, things have bottomed out. You don't, you don't know if things have bottomed out. 
No one does, right? It really depends on the path of, of where rates go. And, you know, no one really has that information right now. I mean, the way around it is to focus on asset classes that are less affected by equity valuations. But so I want to stay on the I want to stay on the Tesla topic because I know that most of the people that are in here probably came for that topic. Um, so let's stay on Tesla and Twitter for now. Um, and and if we really do exhaust it, then we'll move somewhere else. But we have tons of people requested who I imagine have questions about that topic. So let's just stay on that because I know that this obviously Elon is the reason that 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 we had tens of thousands of people in here. So I imagine that people have questions along that basis. Nostra, did you already bring up what you wanted to bring up, bro? Um, yeah, I actually wanted to uh, ask if next time you guys talk to Elon, if you guys can mention if it's possible um, for the spaces to switch hosts. Because you know sometimes the host has connection issues and it just rugs the room. Or if it's possible. Yeah, I disconnected like, to add the features. One thing, so one thing they did add, my phone actually crashed during the space at one point. My Twitter did. And I was able to join back in before the minute when it full on went down and uh, I reconnected the space and we kept going. So I 100% agree with you, but that was a nice little thing that was used during the space. Right when he said uh, I have to leave the first time, I missed like a question or two after that. But yeah, uh, my phone did disconnect during the space. Yeah, somebody the other day was telling me, because uh, I haven't used Clubhouse, but they said on Clubhouse, the host could leave and the room could continue that's on. That's right. And I think that's, yeah, that's a good feature. Cool. You know, Twitter should just buy clubhouses. You could probably buy for pennies today. I asked him if Twitter spaces is important, and I was kind of hoping for the, yeah, it's super important, and I didn't get that. He did say it is important, and it's a good part of Twitter, but he wasn't like, uh, it didn't feel the sound-wise as, uh, maybe I have to go back and, and read yeah. it. I mean, it's, it's harder to monetize. All. Obviously, he thinks it's important because he's chiming into spaces, but it's probably like a, a uh, third or fourth inning, right? Uh, yeah, FinTwit I know uses uh, Spaces a lot on a daily basis. Um, but how much bandwidth is uh, Spaces uh, taking up, and how much is it costing compared to the other parts of Twitter? I would assume it's substantial, especially the ones who record the rooms. Yeah, I would think the incremental ROI, like return to Twitter on a space, is much less than. You know, the, if that money or bandwidth were spent on improving, you know, display ads in, in its short term. But I don't think Elon necessarily thinks, you know, spaces are going to be a cash cow in the next year or two. And um, uh, that's what I was thinking of. Somebody else mentioned because Elon wants to put like uh, long form videos on Twitter, hosting them as opposed to linking them from YouTube. And my thought on that is the bandwidth is going to be crazy and the costs are going to be enormous. Oh, yeah. You need to invest in servers and you need a better relationship with maybe he outsources everything. But that's a very expensive project for him to to do. But I do think that, you know, video advertising CPMs are much higher. And if he does want to get into that space, having it as a long term objective is is probably a good thing. Does anybody know, is Twitter on uh, AWS? The Amazon Web Services, is, are they the host of the data center for Twitter? Does anybody know? I think Twitter I owns a lot of its servers and it might have other relationships as well. Yeah, I'm not sure about that one. That's a good question. Um, let's jump to some other people as well and see if anybody has comments. Uh, Olumide, and I'm sorry if I butchered that. Olumide. Okay. Well, once you get a chance, you can unmute your mic. AJ, what's up? Hey, what's going on? No, I already um I already pegged my